Hello, and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages five to 105. I'm Kim, and I love stories. Hello, how are you? The story we're going to hear today comes from the South American country of Guyana and it's told by the magnificent storyteller Toop, whose family comes from there. Guyana is very close to Brazil, and it has part of the Amazon rainforest in it. Think of all the beautiful coloured birds who come from that rainforest. Parrots, macaws, kingfishers, hummingbirds. In this story, Toop tells us how the people of Guyana say that those birds got their wonderful colours. How do you think the birds got their colours? Did they drink lots of grape juice? Or did their parents dip them in paint? Have a little think while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. And we'll be right back. Hello, super great kids. It's me again, Kim. Any ideas about how you think the birds got their colours? Let's have a little listen to Toop and see what he has to say. Ready? Mouth open, story, jump, out. Once upon a time, a long time ago, when all the birds were white, there was a young boy who loved nothing more than to go hunting. If he saw a bird Perched up in the tree, he would take his catapult with a stone inside, pulling it back. He would take aim at the bird and try to kill the bird. But his mother did not like him doing this, and she scolded him, saying, My boy, this thing which you do is not a good thing at all. You are not like your father, you are not like your uncle. Leave those birds alone. But like most little children, he liked to be a little bit mischievous. One day, when he was far from the village, he saw a bird perched up in a tree. He took a stone and placed it in his catapult. He took aim and <laughs> shot the bird down. It fluttered to the ground, and the boy was happy in his heart when he ran over and picked up the limp bird. Ah, he said, I will show this to all my friends, and they will see that I am a really good hunter. So he started to sing and dance all the way back to the village. His village has an assortment of round houses called Binabs. And the young boy goes to the back of his Binab. He digs a ditch. He's about to bury his limp bird in the ditch. His mother is inside the house. She hears something scratching outside at the back of the Binab. She's thinking maybe there's a wild boar a wild dog, something foul in the ground. She comes out, she walks round to the back of the house and what does she see but her son trying to hide something. She knows what he's been doing. She creeps up behind him as he is patting down the mound. I have told you before, not to hunt those birds. How many times must I tell you? Get to your sleeping mat. You will have nothing to eat tonight, nothing to drink tonight. He coils up on his sleeping mat and cries himself to sleep. Early before the dawn of the sun rises, the young boy wakes up. He looks over to see that his mother and father are fast asleep. He tells himself, I'm going to run away. 
I'm not going to stay here. Why should I have someone to tell me when I can hunt, if I cannot hunt, when I can play, if I cannot play? He picks up his catapult and makes his way into the Amazon jungle. All around him, the jungle becomes alive. He sees a bird perched up on the branch of a tree. He picks up a stone and places it into his catapult. He takes aim and... Do you think he caught the bird? No. That bird flew deeper and deeper into the Amazon jungle. And the young boy, he chased the bird. All day he chased the bird. All day until the sun started to set. Then the jungle became alive with sound. Wow! That's when he grew scared. That's when he became frightened. He asked himself, why did I run away? My mother is right. I'm not old enough. He looked right. He looked left. He looked in front of him. He looked behind of him. He did not know which way he came. Now he does not know which way to return. He was lost. And the jungle enclosed itself around him. Now his heart was pushing against his chest. He was running, running as fast as he could through the jungle. He did not know where he was going until he fell head over heels into a deep hole. When the shaft of moonlight shone down into the hole, He could see on the walls there was encrusted stones, diamonds, lapis lazuli, gems, jewels, rubies. The young boy said, I will make a fine, brightly coloured garland of stones. I will present it to my mother and ask her to forgive me for all the hurt that I have caused her. I should not have run away. He cut a vine which was growing down and he started to knot and thread the beautiful brightly coloured stones one over the other. When he finished, he thought that he would wear it like a necklace until he reached back to the camp. So he put it around his own neck for safekeeping. But then a strange thing began to happen. The brightly coloured stones began to glow bright. He tried to take the necklace off, but he could not. The necklace was heavy. He could not pull it above his head. It weighed him down. It glowed. And he found himself changing. He was growing longer and longer. His arms were being fused next to his body. His legs was being fused together. He was changing more and more, growing longer and taller, taller and longer. His whole body changed into a snake. A snake called a rainbow snake. The rainbow snake would go down by the riverside and coil itself around the river tree. There it would wait, sometimes walking by the banks of the river. There would be a cow, a sheep or a goat. The rainbow snake would leap out and snap its prey down, down. It would take it and consume it under the water. The chief of the people called everyone together. What shall we do? said the chief. The rainbow snake is killing our livestock. 
what shall we do? And the people, they said, call your men of arms, your warriors. So the warriors, they came with their blowpipes and their poison darts, with their bows and their arrows and their lances. They came to the water's edge. And when they made movement on the surface of the water, the rainbow snake awoke, rose itself out of the river. But the rainbow snake, let me tell you, is not like a snake that you may imagine. The rainbow snake is a giant. It's a dinosaur of a snake. And when it lifted itself out of the water and the men could see what it truly looked like, their hearts turned like mice and they ran. Back, back and fight, said the chief. Back and fight, I tell you. Why do you run? But they were long gone. The chief sat there with his head in his hands. Who would save his village? They say, flying out of the sky came a cormorant. The cormorant landed down on the ground next to the chief saying, Chief, I will go and kill the rainbow snake. The chief looked at the cormorant saying, You are one bird. How can you achieve such a task? And the cormorant said, Send for an arrow and place it in my beak and you will see what you will see. So the chief called for an arrow and it was placed in the beak of the bird which took to the sky, higher and higher it flew. Then it twisted its body and like an arrow it fell out of the sky into the water and with its flipping, flapping feet it swam towards the rainbow snake. The rainbow snake felt the vibrations in the water. Something was coming. The rainbow snake opened one eye. It saw the cormorant coming with the arrow. The rainbow snake uncoiled itself, opening two eyes, and lunged towards the cormorant. But the cormorant was swift, and before you know it, the arrow was wedged deep in the throat of the rainbow snake which sank down to the bottom of the river like a stone. The people were very happy indeed. Someone dived into the river. They dragged the rainbow snake out and left the skin in the sun to dry. The chief looked at the rainbow snake's skin. Its colors were so beautiful. He wanted it as a trophy. But he had to call for the cormorant, for really it was truly his reward. So the chief called for the cormorant. Cormorant, cormorant, cormorant. Flying out of the sky there came the cormorant which landed down upon the ground. And the chief said to the cormorant, cormorant, Leave this reward for me. You are one bird and you cannot carry it away. It is too large a task for you. Why don't you leave it for me? But the cormorant ignored the chief and flew up into the sky and squeaked and squawked, calling all the birds from all over the jungle, from the forest, from the woodlands. They all flew up like a huge white cloud. They came to where the cormorant was, and the cormorant said to the birds, Help me take away this large snake. I will share it amongst you equally. Help me, help me. The birds, they flew down and they picked up the rainbow snake skin and took it into the sky like a rainbow. The cormorant was at the head of the rainbow snake. The cormorant said to the rest of the birds, Take the piece that you hold, so I will share it amongst you equally. Take the piece that you hold. Some birds had a green and orange piece. 
Some birds had a black, yellow and white piece. And as the birds ate their piece of the rainbow snake, they found that their bodies were changing into the beautiful colours they are today. And so, that's how the birds flying in the Amazon jungle got their colours. And so ends my story. Thank you, Toop, for that. Toop is so good at imitating those animals. Do you think you could roar like a jaguar? A jaguar, for those who don't know, is a big cat, a bit like a leopard, which is the national animal of Guyana. Time to dig into our bag of happies and thank yous. A very special thanks to all our listeners in Wellington, New Zealand. If you're new to Super Great Kids Stories, do give us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. It's so lovely hearing from people who love stories from all around the world. And a big thanks to all of you who are subscribing to us on Apple Podcasts. We don't have access to your names, but you know who you are. And if you'd like us to thank you in the podcast, please just contact me on Messenger through our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash supergreatkidsstories. And super great thanks to Amina, who posted a bright, happy picture of how the rainbow got into the sky on our Facebook page. Thanks, Amina, for that. I wonder if any of you could draw a picture of how the birds got their colour or, from last week's story, a picture of Ted with his tiger. So do send in those pictures. We really love hearing from you. It puts a spring in our step. See you next week. <laughs>